Good evening, everybody. Welcome to tonight's Storyteller webinar in conjunction with our friends at Fundy Designer. Hi, Kate. How are you? I'm fine, thanks. How are you? I'm very good. As I said, we've been chatting behind the wings, but uh, great to have you uh, with us tonight. So thank you for uh, agreeing to take part. I've had a sneaky peek of the presentation because you sent it over earlier, so I know uh, we're in uh, for a, a great presentation. Kate, just before we get going, for people who might not have heard of you, tell us just a little bit about yourself and how you kind of your journey into the wedding photography and the event wedding photography came about. Sure. Um, so I've been um, a professional photographer now for, I think it's coming up to 10 years, very much um, a second career for me. So I started out in the world of um, kind of fine art. So I, I studied fine art and history of art at university. And then I went into um, that world, which was um, interesting. And then into TV where I worked in marketing and uh, finally in kind of international branding, which was fab. Um, but you know, got married, decided to have kids, and moved out of London. And um, with very small children, was going a little bit uh, crazy. Not officially, um, just Groundhog Day. And um, I basically either wanted to do jewelry design or photography. And so it started then as a as a hobby. And I went into that highly addictive stage where you're taking your camera everywhere and an enormous amount of pretty terrible pictures um and and you know people saying you know you could do this and you could make money and um it was that or the commuter train back into london for me um and it was just a intensely steep learning curve for the next two or three years and um and it, you know it still is in many ways because the industry changes so quickly but i very much started out in uh portraits really kind of family and weddings and later on um moved more into boudoir which is a great love of mine in terms of what I like to shoot. And that was all kind of great. And then um, went through a pretty awful divorce, but ended up meeting Brent, who a lot of people who do know me knows that he's come into um, my kind of world, um, also as a second career person. And he's introduced me to uh, filming. And, you know, interestingly, when, you know, you asked me to, to be part of this webinar, you know, it's, it's almost kind of Brent's influence and, and filming that made me think about doing a webinar from a slightly different angle to normal. That, um, you know, that, so, sorry, sorry to interrupt, Kate. That's oh, that I didn't mean to over talk you there. Sorry. But what I loved when Angela wrote to me saying that you would take part and that you wrote your synopsis about what we were going to cover, you know, the narrative. Um, and, and I read that first few lines about what you know what we were going to cover tonight. I just went, you know what? That we, we 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 want this. This is it's so common that we forget about it, and these things are important. And I didn't know about Brent until you until we've been chatting over the last few weeks. So that makes sense because obviously my, you don't know this, but my background is film and television before I got into photography. So. Yeah, so brilliant. Okay, well look, I know you've got a great presentation to share with them. So should we should we get get it over to you and we'll get cracking yeah definitely yeah, um, uh, you go ahead Kate sorry love I didn't mean to talk over you okay no fine no 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 so um have you, they now got my screen no I'm gonna send it over to you now <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> so I think there's a little bit of a delay between me and you Kate so I think that's why I'm just talking over you a little bit so apologies um so okay. I've sent you the the thing across it should be saying can you see it yes it is There we go. I'm seeing you in full screen. I can hear you loud and clear, and it is your main screen that I can see, which is fine. So, guys, before I go quiet, any questions you have for Kate, please put them through the question panel or for Fundy. Um, and, Kate, I'm here if you need me. It's all yours. Thank you. Um, so, really, to reiterate, guys, just so you can, um, you know, be with me here, I'm sat in, in my office um, uh, talking to a screen. So I, I know so I know you're kind of out there, but please, please feel free to ask questions as we go along. There will be time at the end equally. Um, but, you know, the more informal, the better from my perspective. So, um, OK, I decided to call the um, the presentation, if you like, controlling the narrative. And oh, see, that's not a good sign. There we go. Um, and a lot of photographers talk about 
storytelling. And if you go online and read photographers um, about me pages, you know, a lot of us talk a lot about it. Uh, uh, but I often think in a slightly um, empty way, and we don't necessarily then go on and demonstrate it properly. Um, obviously, we all love stories and humans love stories and uh, i think it's very easy for us to to kind of go ahead and, and say that we are storytellers but fundamentally um obviously we are now it's much easier to tell stories if you're a wedding photographer than it is um many other types of photography because there's a story playing out in front of you at every wedding um the story is often quite similar and you know, when you get to the end of the season, like I just have, it can get a little bit too similar. But um, it's how you approach each wedding that matters. And I think it's really important before we kind of get more into the presentation. I've always said that um, there are many, many different ways to shoot weddings and many different styles of photography. And that just because I choose to shoot weddings the way I do doesn't mean it's the right way for other people. Um, and it's a big, big thing when a bride and groom hand over the power of the photography to you because they really are giving control of how your story or their story is retold. And it's enormous. And having got married myself um, for the second time again last year, you really do realise what a big, a big responsibility that is and how important it is for the people who, who are getting married. Um, wedding photographers actually have a real luxury of content so you know we tend to be at weddings for between eight and ten hours and you know we all know you get a quick break but otherwise you really are taking photographs constantly um and that is a good thing and it's much more in many ways um like the world of films and, I, and as i said at the start you know brent introducing me to beginning to actually film as well has really opened my eyes to weddings and storytelling in a completely different way. Now, you get a lot of content at a wedding, but actually what comes with that, I think is, is quite a lot of pressure to do different things and to have different roles. Um, and to, in many ways, what you take on is a, is a choice. Um, and, but when you take on these roles, it also helps you market yourself and how you want to present yourself as a wedding photographer. Um, we all, every single one of us, surely, the one role that is not in dispute is the director of photography. Now, I am using the terms and I'm using the, um, if you like, the descriptions of what these roles are directly from the world of films. But it's the same in so many ways. So I'm just going to read that. So if the director of photography is responsible for establishing the visual look of the movie and the DP tells the story through the artistic and technical decisions that they make regarding lighting, they looking at their film stock, shot selection, camera operation, etc. And we all know that that is what we have to do. And we all make different decisions on how we use light and how we use you know which lenses we use and, and all this kind of thing but you know there's no dispute that that's that's our job your style and how you describe yourself will uh, fundamentally dictate if you also take on the role of director and um, i think this is where it can get really interesting and you can have great debates with other photographers about whether it's right or wrong to get involved with the wedding story and i don't think that there is a right or wrong answer to this i honestly think it depends on the kind of photographer that you are and the kind of people that you work with um but the director role then is um where you begin to control the the artistic and dramatic aspects um and you visualize the kind of screenplay or the script while guiding the technical crew and actors in the fulfillment of that vision and i put this particular image in just because it is one of the many kind of shots that we will take on a wedding day where this would not have happened if I just let the day play out. And I have always said, 
quite openly both to the industry and to my clients that we are not and I say we because Brendan and I work together so much now that we are not documentary photographers and that's a choice um, we do get involved on the wedding day and we do try and make things happen we don't it's interesting that doesn't mean I change the story or want to control the story it just means that I want to direct the, the bride and groom or whoever's involved um, into an environment that allows them to play out as they would all the emotion and all the moments exactly as it would but just in a nicer setting um, and that is definitely a choice and it, you can ask you know at what stage has that always been since the beginning of cheating weddings and you know absolutely not the first however many weddings I shot I was in total panic if I'm honest um, and I was just shooting away and shooting away and shooting away and not thinking about um, anything except capturing exactly what's happening in front of me so um, I wasn't thinking about light properly um, I wasn't even particularly thinking creatively in terms of how I was using my lenses it was just just a case of um, capturing exactly what was playing out um, over time began to get quite frustrated um, because potentially things were happening in really not very nice um, maybe locations or the light was awful or you know a combination or I was cramped um, whatever it was I just felt a lot of frustration and um, I also find that a lot a lot of weddings if I just wait for things to happen I'm gonna be waiting a long time um, I have seen a massive change in the last, you know, five years at weddings where guests um, can display, you know, maybe a lack of uh, being in the moment themselves, um, maybe boredom, they're on their phones, um, you know, it's just a whole different landscape and, and I, you know, we tell a version of the truth at the weddings that we shoot and that's absolutely to do with the kind of couples that we work with and, it, and it's not for everyone, as I said um so definitely over time i have um come to uh, a place where uh where appropriate and i can't really stress that enough where appropriate i do direct um and sometimes that is purely by moving people into better light and that's probably the most frequent thing that i do and i'm very open and honest with um my my couples and my clients about that and even to the to the point where if i get stopped at a wedding by uh, a group of three or four people and they just ask me to take a photograph of them i will always do it but i won't necessarily do it in the spot that they've stopped i will say sure but i just need you to turn around or i just need you to stand over here and you know 90 percent of the time that's absolutely fine 10 percent of the time i can see it annoys it annoys you know this the people have stopped me and I just think to myself, well, you know, it's my job to put you in the best spot to take the photograph that you are demanding of me to be taken in the next five seconds. So, um, again, it comes down to, to choice and how you want to work as a photographer. And I certainly have, you know, I'm, I'm not judging anybody who wouldn't do it. Um, but over the years, and certainly how I speak to my clients, not only on my website, but when I meet them in person, is that I talk about the fact that I create pictures as much as I take them and the reason I, I I explain this to them is that I need them to understand that if they want to work with me uh, and it, you know and if they want that then they need to understand that there is going to be an element of that because you know weddings are stressful and um, finding enough time to take half decent pictures is hard and we're always up against it and timings are always shifting but I need a commitment from clients that they want nice pictures and I make it very clear to them that it, that takes effort that they can't just assume that um, with no input from them they're going to get a beautiful set of kind of wedding photographs I talk a lot to my clients about teamwork and and saying look you know if we you know if we do manage to get away on the couple session or at the time that we've agreed to do it 
I know it's the first time that you're going to see your husband and you've got a lot to talk about, but you know, they've got to actually commit to being in the moment for, for 10 minutes and actually give some energy and effort to the photographs because you know, one thing that I can't hide is um, how someone's feeling. So, you know, if a groom's feeling impatient or he doesn't want to be there or, you know, something's upset the bride or the great aunt's upset the bride, she has to actually put that feeling away um, in order to get the kind of images that she's she's asked me for. And, and that takes teamwork and it takes them understanding that I'm not a magician, that it, it's it's, you know, we all have to work at it. But it's very much then it is controlling the narrative um but as i said where appropriate so this shot of these um three bridesmaids was actually brent um so i saw it and um i was one side of the fountain and brent was you know shooting on the other side and we both took the same photograph unbeknownst to each other um and he showed me when we were flipping through later and i said oh i got the same shot and and he laughed and he said, um, you know, I asked the girls to sit there. And I said, no, I didn't. I said, I turned around and it looked super cute. And he, and he said, no, 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 um, they'd, they'd been playing and running around and he got them to sit there. And, um, you know, some of you, might, you know, might kind of tut and say, oh, you know, so it's not, it's not authentic. Um, yeah, potentially not, but this is how, this is how Brent and I work. And I've never uh, been afraid to be very honest about that. Um, okay, so we've got the director of photography role, which we should all be doing. The director role, which is a choice and will absolutely have a big impact on how you describe who you are as a photographer. And finally, and I think this is the thing that's become much more um, kind of, of something I've become more aware of recently is the role of editor. And so again, if we come back to definitions, um, at the most basic level, the role of a film editor is to put together the scenes of a film in a manner where they are entertaining, engaging, and tell the story as it was intended to be told. So I now sit with my back to Brent's desk and he sits and edits film, you know, all the time. And I've become very good at being a, um, you know, a backseat editor <laughs> because I don't know, how to use the software but I certainly understand what he's doing and why he's doing it and we speak at length about um about the editing role and I don't think photographers give nearly as much thought to it it's more about you know we talk about the length of time we all spend editing in a negative way um we talk about whether you should finish the images um or not and you know there's much discussion about it being a really um kind of annoying part of the whole uh, process um and what the reality is that there are things that we can and can't control as photographers, which is different from um, kind of film films and film editing. We we can obviously control the final cut, and that's a really a really big thing because I don't know about you guys, but um, certainly since I moved to Sony and mirrorless, ironically, I'm taking even more photographs at weddings than I ever did, and that's because the focusing system is so fast and so accurate. And with mirrorless, you're seeing what you get which means I actually work even faster than I did before. So the cull has become, to be honest, you know, quite a, a major task. Um, and you are culling people's stories and memories. And, and interestingly, from my own wedding, I was surprised by um, the fact we, you know, I expected to see more photographs than we did. Um, and, and it really made, made me realise that, you know, you are, handing control of that to your photographer um, we can obviously control the order of the story and largely i'm sure photographers keep it um, in in the sense of the actual order of the day brent with film can sometimes time shift that this is a phrase of of pulling out moments that happen later in the day and putting them up front in a in a in a film and where that can make sense it would be really odd to do that with how you deliver um photos and you can obviously add audio into the mix um i personally hate looking at um a slideshow or a series of images in silence but throwing in audio is a whole can of worms in itself and you know whether it's actually nice audio or not um it's really really hard to control the duration or the pace of how 
you play back the story of somebody's wedding. Um, you know, I, Brent and I talk about how we, how in a film we might move from one scene to another, and whether we're actually using some kind of device to do that. And there's many different devices in film editing, um, and you can emphasize key moments um, or things. You can move into slow mo. You can, you know, speed things up. It's you just have all this control of how you can retell a story that we don't have with photography. And I think we've all come to this stage now where we are relying on digital display um we are you know obviously still using not only our websites but obviously social media and we're just throwing images out there and you know inevitably it's a piece of software that's controlling it and this is just a screenshot of one of the uh, by lumia uh, galleries on the website and obviously the images have gone in there um and it's a dominant landscape gallery because I shoot probably 90% in landscape, but it does mean that any vertical images have much less uh, prominence. Um, it equally means that uh, what to me might have been a very insignificant shot, uh, really of just putting it in because I know that I, I should take it, can have more dominance than um, an image that really deserves to be given much more um, space and weight, if you like. Um, and interestingly, years ago, um, Stuart, who um, owns and runs Folio Albums, made this uh, statement, and it's always stuck with me because he actually said that shooting with the album design in mind has been one of the greatest lessons of his wedding photography career. And obviously, this was before he went on to design the kind of album that he wanted to give his clients. But I am exactly the same. And um, we I, I still print albums and probably uh, thankfully at least probably 50 to 60 percent of my clients still have an album and this is just a very short instagram clip um of trying to get across the experience of still having an album <laughs> Okay, so Kate, okay, can I just interrupt? Album. Sorry, yeah. sorry. I just wanted to say that we did have a delay on the video as we expected, to be honest. So um what just wanted to remind people of that is just is to do with the webinar. But what we'll probably do, if that's okay with you, Kate, I'm sure you can send me the clip and we'll edit it properly into the recording. Is that okay? Yeah, I mean, honestly, really it's not even an important part of the presentation. It's more to say that because I do still print albums and believe in them, um, it's quite important to express that to your clients and try to get across why. And that still comes down to touch. But, you know, when you look at an album, you immediately notice that um, you're able to give pace and emphasis to the story, which you can't on an online gallery. And um, I go into every wedding now, honestly thinking about albums whether i print one or not so critically trying to tell the story what i say from micro to macro so i'm as much thinking about big wide angle shots as i am about the tiniest detail on the dress um and every scene that i go into i try to um deliver against that if you like and so i'm thinking very carefully about lenses and use of lenses um and obviously focal lengths and so there's things like this where you are, you know, telling the story of, of where the wedding's happening. I, I asked the hotel to bring the wedding dress up to the spa because this is the best view from the hotel. And um, my clients, when they when they uh, design their albums, put these images in really big. And, and I know that uh, a lot of money and a lot of time is spent on, on details. 
And so, whereas some photographers might say, I would never take a, a hanging shot of a dress, I know my kind of clients um, want it. But it's really important to also say the people and the emotions are, are critical. So yes, you can take pictures of the beautiful stuff, but you've got to give just as much, if not more, to the people side of the storytelling. Um, I think I can't stress enough that when you start to think about printing an album, as I said, whether you do or not, consistency will the, 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 will take over as it should. I see, I do a lot of mentoring, I look a lot, a lot of photographers wedding um, kind of collections and we go through it together and I have to spend a lot of time talking to people about how their work just isn't consistent and it can maybe look like two or three different photographers and so I, I talk about trying to be consistent in, in, in your use of light. Um, so if I go to see the bride and then I go to see the groom, I'm, I'm thinking about, well, I've just shot the bride like this. So is there any way that I can shoot the groom in a similar way so that it flows and it feels like it's the same wedding? Um, and of course, this is where your own style comes in and how, and how you choose to shoot around that. But consistency is so important when you see your images printed in collections. And also time. And by that, I mean that in an album, I could say 20% of an album could be taken up with detail shots. So I give time to the detail shots. And I, if I don't know if you guys can see that little thunderbug on my screen. Can you see it, Jay? <laughs> or can you not see that kind of detail? If you're all looking at the images thinking there's a little black dot, it's a thunderbug behind my screen. There's a um, sorry, love. What am I looking for? I don't, there's a little, I don't know if you can see the thunderbug on my screen. No, okay, Brent's saying no. Um, you just all think I've got some dust spot on my screen. So I, in the morning, spend probably about 45 minutes on the detail shots, and I will even start early if necessary. And some people are like, I cannot believe you spend so long. And it's because I know that they're going to be very dominant in the album. Not by my choice. I never choose the images that go into an album, the, the, the clients do, but I know that they will choose a lot of these shots. So therefore, it's really important that I put quite a lot of energy into them. Um, now, neither of these are particularly interesting spreads, and they're from years ago, but the, it's really important to just explain a bit of what's going on behind. So on the left-hand side, there's a wedding at Wadston, and Wadston, the, the bride gets ready in what can only be described as a conference room. It is awful, and uh, there's nowhere to take detail shots, so I always kind of go off and try and find somewhere, and I'm looking for something simple, and in this case, you can see the dress on the top left. <clears throat> Just to the left of that is this kind of um, stone bench. That's all I can explain, it. and there's obviously light coming in from a window on the right-hand side, so that's where I chose to do all of the detail shots because I know inevitably they're going to end up on a spread, something like this. And this is what the client chose for one of her spreads. On the right hand side, to me, this is just deeply boring. Um, but the reason I put it in is because I need, you need to see this. So flipping back to this, looking on the right hand side, you can go, yeah, the details are just on the kind of reflective, very plain white background really boring this is actually the room I was in and um, there are about eight bridesmaids running around breakfast was still on the table you know it's very typical of what we all see at weddings and I ended up moving that Philips TV off there going to get a towel from the bathroom cleaning that space up shoving everything to the right hand side and that's where I shot the, the, the details just using the natural light from the wind on the left so this is the reality of what I often deal with. I think some people can think that I walk into beautiful scene after beautiful scene. I don't, um, but I will make the effort to move things and try and just create some kind of clarity that I know can then be put into an album. Um, obviously, you've got to always be thinking that albums need to have full page images or full page spreads, and that's where I'm trying to do something a bit more creative in terms of use of light and composition, and I'm always thinking of those shots so by the end of the day and if I don't feel like I've got them I will push the bride and groom to give me five ten minutes at the end of the day and it's just a really important part of, of, of an album design um, I'm always just trying to throw in a couple of shots that are a bit different um, and this is this was a wedding over in Spain and she's actually she's still got her rollers in her hair and everything she's come down to 
talk to somebody about the ceremony set up and I was outside shooting and, and, and kind of came and I could see her and so I just shot through some doors. This is a um, groom, I just finished doing some groom prep and there's just this beautiful light um, at Ashridge and so I just asked him to stop there. So I'm constantly looking for um, the odd image that will be, um, I know will be quite larger than an album. I've also learned over the years that bride and grooms do not like their faces to be very large in an album. So whilst it's really important to take beautiful portraits of a bride and groom, in my experience, they tend to go into eight by 10 inch frames for the mum or, you know, the, in the house rather than being given kind of real dominance in an album. So I always try and make sure I get some shots where the bride and groom are, relatively speaking, quite small in the frame. Okay, so, Obviously, up to now, I've talked about um, actually printing, physically printing albums, and, and that's really important. And, you know, I know how expensive it is to produce albums for marketing purposes. Um, and in this day and age, whilst that's still important if you're doing wedding fairs, there's this massive um, potential and opportunity to actually design albums for marketing that you're not needing to print. And that's where my Fundy Love comes in. And and I am, you know, talk, speaking about Fundy from my heart. There is no, there is no um, agenda here at all. I actually came across them at the photography show and um, kind of, they said, look, can we just spend 15 minutes showing you how it all works? And I was like, sure. And at that point I used to send, well, I'd spent years designing my own albums. It took me hours. I then used to get either Queensbury or Folio to design them for me. And I used to pay Folio for that. Um, and it was still frustrating because at the end of the day, they hadn't shot the wedding, they didn't know the story. Um, and then I began to understand how easy funding is. I mean, it's just, if you haven't used it yet, I'm, uh, you know, like Jay said, it will literally change the way you work. It's fantastic. Um, so what I'm now doing is um, rather than just trying to put up a, you know, a wedding gallery after a wedding gallery after a wedding gallery, I'm trying to introduce my um, couples to not only the concepts of albums right from the beginning, but also trying to let, let them see other people's weddings um, in a way that I can control the pace and the narrative a bit more. So um, this is just a screenshot of uh, one of our sites, but I've said here the middle kind of paragraph that each wedding is a love story that deserves to be shared. In this digital age, we still believe in the power and beauty of print and the role of albums as a physical legacy to pass down the generations. On the day we shoot with an album in mind, creating and crafting beautiful images to preserve the precious memories of the people, the emotions, the places, and all the best moments of your wedding story. Before exploring individual galleries, press play and watch the highlights of Vicky and Luigi's wedding day. And if you'd like to view the album larger, please use this link. So if you click on the button down there, it does play within the browser. And um, but I'm just going to pop out now and go to um, that link because it brings it up in a separate um, browser window much larger. Now I design the the albums in Fundy and um, I'll talk a little bit about kind of how quick it is but it's honestly now a pleasure to design albums and I think that that's massively new for me. I actually really really enjoy it. If I'm designing an album for marketing I choose the images and I choose you know how much weight they all get but if it's a um, client album, 100% they choose the images themselves, which I'll talk about in a sec. So I'm just going to press play.
Yeah, it's very odd, guys. I don't, you know, the music came on very loud. Obviously, yeah, it's case in a cycle. So that's one wedding. Um, as I said, it, because I've done it purely for marketing purposes, this is, is probably about 90% of the images that the client actually chose, but I've just given slightly different um, weights, if you like, to, to some of them. And just to flick back to um, one of the images in the actual ceremony, it's little things, um, I think, like this that matter, that I think someone who hadn't been to the wedding might actually think that there was an awful lot of prominence given to um, some candles here. But actually, each one of those candles represents somebody that the family has lost, and, and I know that. And so it, that's, again, and I'm, I'm saying it's very difficult when you just look at a gallery of images to understand which ones are more important to, to the client than others. And then here's a very, very different album, um, a couple that um, got married at Sion Park. And again, I'm just going to play the album so you have a quick look. where time is flying um so i just want to briefly mention um why i love designing with fundy so much uh, it's so fast so each of those albums probably took me um about an hour to design i know that they're um 
are you know using the auto design everything people can design albums in 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 honestly 10 to 15 minutes and that is the truth um i'm just you know somebody who uh, actually quite enjoys it now i enjoy the process um and uh so i take maybe longer than some people but to me it's an hour versus a day and it's just painless so one of the things that i love is that i mentioned i asked the um my clients to actually tell me 100 percent which which images they want and i also asked them to choose about 15 to 20 percent of the album images they'd like to see larger so um in lightroom i use the um the rating um uh, method to tell me if images are favorites or need to be given dominance in the album and that comes through in fundy and so when i'm designing it's very easy for me to know that when i'm designing this spread these are the images that have to be more dominant and you can obviously search and filter that way so that you know where you are with it and so i've just circled in red there um obviously how that works the other feature which is very good and particularly good if you want to try using the auto design method which is where the the out you know you can choose how many spreads you'd like the total design to be you can state how many um kind of images per spread maximum you would like you can then use this this grouping method where again if you know these are the detail shots and that you want to keep them together on a spread with each other or the say the green prep shots or the speeches you can just group them all here in the software and then it will design the album with that in mind so it's kind of intelligently helping you do it and another feature which is actually really useful is i do retouch my bride's skin but certainly not uh, across the whole day and only for um really the, the couple photographs and maybe some of the bridal prep shots if they are um you know if if their faces are quite big in the frame, but there is the ability with Fundy to actually, whilst you're designing, to go kind of back in and and do some skin work and that kind of thing. So um, I found it really useful if I'm mixing images where I might have done a little bit of work and then I've thrown another image in and I'm like, oh, you can see that maybe that image does need a bit of work but rather than having to kind of go and do that in Photoshop. You have the ability to actually use this. Um, Kind of skin softening and it's really good so little things like that which again just um save you so much time is amazing so um that's the kind i'm just very aware we need to see time for questions that is me trying to explain to you guys um why i believe um album design and storytelling is so important but not just on the day about how you then control showing that back to your own client but i think more importantly potential clients and i really think it's a i don't know if you all agree but i think it's a much more powerful way to sell a wedding is by using an album design rather than just a gallery of images um and until discovering fundy there was no way i would have put the hours into designing an album i was never going to print i mean that's really what it comes down to um I'm just putting, leaving it kind of on this slide before we go to questions, just to say that Brent and I are going to be at Photo Hubs um, next week. And one of the things, apart from, you know, really uh, changing the way I shoot weddings with album design in mind, is the fact that I now shoot a lot of weddings using uh, flash and artificial lighting. And people who know me know that that's the case. I used to be really scared of it. Um, and so we've chosen to go and talk at Photo Hubs and try and get rid of some of the fear that people have around um, lighting weddings and lighting, that kind of thing. Um, we finished our wedding season on Saturday with the most hideous weather. So if any others were out there shooting on Saturday, it was just unbelievable. And um, but I woke up just thinking, shame, I'm going to have to you know, light, light the wedding from start to finish, um, which is what we did. But um, I know a lot of people are just really frightened by it. And I just want to kind of, we're trying to get rid of the fear. So uh, um, on that note, I'm going to kind of leave the slides on, on questions um, and hand back to Jay really, but I'm very happy to answer anything that um, people have come up with. Excellent. Thank you, Kate. I mean, it was um, it was what I expected and then some. So thank you so much. I mean, it was really it's you know, I've I've done a lot of these 
uh, webinars across the board, not just with Fundy, with wedding photographers, with portrait photographers. Um, and you know, we've we've looked a lot of album designs in the past, but um, you know, we've we've we talk about storytelling here from Mark Clegg on photography, and I think it's so important. But you nailed that today, um, you know, and I have seen so many it's a horrible word thrown together you know albums and to reiterate what you said about the beauty of fundy we fund we found fundy like you before we got involved with them we found them we downloaded the free trial mark went my god jay this is life changing you know as in time saving but the it we grew with it as it grew and we just went you know these are guys know what they're talking about we started talking to them um, you know, and it is photographers building tools for photographers. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, they've got the techie knowledge as well that puts it all together for us. But yeah, that's you know, it. Yeah. you're absolutely right. You know, you can, you know, you can let Fundy build you an incredible album, you know, in 20 minutes, you yeah. know, but even an hour, like you said, which, you know, still is, is phenomenal. You know, you showed us two there, two completely different stories, but you did show us the stories of those wedding days. We did see those couple stories through. Going through the questions that I've got for you, Kate, and a few of them, I, I was expecting these. And to be honest, I wrote some down as well because I was kind of interested. Um, firstly, I want to ask, um, you mentioned obviously that you shoot, you're shooting now with Brent and obviously he's got yeah. filmmaker's background. But are you two photographers on the day or are you doing photography and video on the day? So we, um, I didn't really explain it brilliantly at the beginning, but there, I still have Kate Hegel Smith Photography, which is uh, really weddings uh, and boudoir. And that's only photography. And then Brent and I run uh, by Lumia together, which is photography, film, and air. Um, and we, and that's where people um, can choose to have all three. And by air, I mean drone work, or just photography, or both. So if they do choose both, then uh, for an average size wedding, Brent and I will each lead a discipline. So I'll lead photography and he will lead um, film and we'll both take a second uh, shooter or filmer with us. Okay, brilliant. I just wanted to know, because I thought looking at the albums, I think it was more pro prominent to me on the, I'm not sure which one it was, but on the second one, the, um, uh, the, what am I, the receptor that when they're having the meal and you were photographing the speeches and things like that, would that have predominantly been your, your shots then, Kate, the sort of the rap, rap, uh, the documentary style? I know both. I mean, um, and, and actually, uh, I think that was Brent at that wedding, but the, the actual, the wedding, uh, before Brent filmed. So, um, it was, um, another lovely Emily who we've mentored and trained, um, and I know, I think Claire's out there who's second shot for me many times. Um, you know, I, I really will only do very small weddings on my own now. And it's not, it's not for any other reason than it's really hard to tell the story with parallel mornings. Yeah. You know, the, br the bride is doing what the bride's doing. And these days the groom is doing something, whether it's having a drink or chat, whatever he's doing, it's his, it's his story. And I don't, it's very hard to do both on your own in the morning and to do it justice. No, I agree. And I think that, I think that maybe I didn't get it across, but in both the weddings that you showed us there, the balance seemed to be spot on from both sides of it there. And, and I know how difficult that can be, especially when you're on your own. Brilliant. Okay, great. Right. Let's get some of these questions off the bat. So uh, this was the one that I wrote down, but I knew I was going to get asked it um, because of the storytelling element. How, are, how much time are you actually getting with the bride and groom? Would you think on a wedding, Kate? Oh my God, this year has been a weird one. Um, um, our worst was nine minutes, um, and probably our most this year was half an hour, 35. I think people think I have hours with them. I don't. Um, I just, and that's again where a second shooter is so, so important. And I, I really brief my second shooters that if they are anywhere near me, they are to be on a different lens. And if they, but if they're on a different angle to me, I, I don't mind what they're shooting. Um, and that we just try and get as much, out. and I work really fast, and I, a lot of my second shooters over the years have kind of said to me, oh my God, Kate, slow down, slow down, and they're like, I, I barely got a shot out, and you're moving on, and I'm like, I'm really sorry, you know, I, I, I just know that the expectations of my clients are ridiculous to the amount of time that we get given, yeah. and whilst we may allocate 45 minutes, we never get 45 minutes, so I've learned to just know that, um, 
you know, I've, I've got to work really, really fast. And, and often I will, and Brent knows this very well, if by the time we get to them sitting down for the, for the wedding breakfast and I don't feel like, yeah, I've got enough, I don't rest. It's like I will go back to the bride and groom at the appropriate time and I'll say, look, can we just do a few night shots or just can I just have 10 more minutes with you? And I, I just I, I can't even explain. I have a gut feeling, even though I haven't really looked at the images when I've got enough or haven't got enough. Yeah, I mean, we we experience that all the time, and that's why 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 I wanted to ask it, but I didn't think I'd be the only one. Uh, we had a wedding, Mark and I, where I was just like I was actually filming it for him, um, but we had uh, a, a huge pre-wedding meeting with the bride and groom who wanted what you would think on paper would be hours of bride and groom photography, but you know we're realistic and we thought, well, we're going to have three different three different locations, three different setups for their bride and groom, so. We were aiming for 15 to 20 minutes each one, and we were exactly like you. I think we were lucky to get five, and even one of the locations, they just went, no, we haven't got time for it now. We're not doing it. And it was it was a shame, really, because we'd done the prep, the plan. Um, yeah. But you know that, like it was, as you said early on, you know, bride and grooms can be a different, different, you know, a different animal on the day, isn't it? They, it, it with all the love and intention in the world, things can change on the spot. Absolutely, and at the end of the day, you know, it's not it's not a photo shoot. And and interesting, Brent and I, we got married over in, in Dubrovnik, and um, because of the heat, you get married at half five, and it was a very intimate wedding, only thirty of us, and we we were very clear we did not want to be away from our friends for an hour on the wedding day. So we actually had a separate kind of location session two days later and and but the wide stuff so I didn't have to look the same <laughs> <laughs> um but yeah it you know at the end of the day if you want the images you need to give it time and and you've got to explain that to your couples because setting expectations is the most vital part of of being you know if you're a documentary photographer or reportage you have every right to say I have no responsibility I am purely documenting what happens. But the minute you step in and say, I am a fine art wedding photographer or whatever, however you want to describe it, you are taking on the responsibility for the finished, for the finished thing, just like a director of a film. Um, and so with, with that comes responsibility and, and expectation setting. And you need to be able to be very clear with your bride and groom that they let down their side of the bargain, whether it was just because they didn't feel like it on the day or because the timings ran away. But, you know, it's 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 a really, really difficult one to get right. So I, you did touch on it when we were looking at the albums just now, um, that obviously you you encourage, well, you ask your, cust your clients to choose their images. Is that a physical face-to-face -face meeting, Kate, or are you using any of the fundy tools for that with the proofer and so on? Um, I proof the albums that way, but um, I actually use um, shoot proof to deliver my online galleries, and um, they, yeah, that they they do all the um, choosing in there, um, and then I move it all into to Fundy to design the album. And and I know lots of people design albums themselves and present them to the couples. I I can't get my head around that personally. It's not it's it's, it's not my wedding. <laughs> you know, I I get a sense of what's a priority on the wedding day, but. I'm often surprised by the images that, that that get into the album. You know, I maybe didn't quite realise how important the relationship was, or or whatever it is. And and I, yeah, I, I I feel very strongly that it's for them to choose, and then for me to make as beautiful a design as I can. Oh, brilliant! I think the beauty of I would, we only we did we only touched on it. Uh, you only because we've got it covered in previous webinars anyway, but. It's, showing as you did today from your site you know the actual you know the, the the album design spreads and how great that fundy makes that available to us and to be able to show it as an album it's got to help sell the cust the, the potential client on you hasn't it if you're showing them a venue that they're, they're getting married at if you've got that as an example if they've got similar kind of locations similar styles being able to show them those albums like you did today that's got to be a brilliant sales tool right well, I mean, it's interesting. Brent and I, we we hardly do any wedding pairs because um, generally they're not the right kind of. I'm, I'm not being a snob. They're not really the right caliber of of couples for what we charge. But we are doing Ashridge, which is our main venue, and we're doing it to support the venue because they love us and we love them. And I would hate that to change. So we're going along, but you kind of say, well, you know, I haven't actually printed a Queensbury or, or Graphy or whoever you're using, I haven't printed a new 
uh, sample album uh, for the last, I think, 18 months or two years. And do I want to spend, you know, three to four hundred pounds doing that for the odd wedding fair? Because most of my clients now, um, I see them before the wedding. I generally don't see them afterwards. And, you know, so Brent and I, so now I've designed some albums like this to show alongside my physical albums. Um, and it's just as effective. And, and, you know, I'm just so glad that I can design them quickly and, ha and, and make them look the way I want. And the other beauty, of course, of using Fundy to design your, your albums that you will never print is you'll probably make them bigger and more spreads and look more impressive than if it was a real album. You know, you can be a bit more flexible with it. It's brilliant. No, fantastic. Right. Uh, we've got a, a, a lighting question because you mentioned it. Let me just make sure I read it right to you, Kate. Um, will the lighting... Uh, oh, sorry. This is a question for you about um, uh, your photo hub in November. Yeah. So your lighting mentioned in November. Will you give examples of lighting first dances, how to be creative with a flash in low lighting situations? Yeah, so there's it's um there's a, a four hour workshop in the morning where Brent and I will just um with Pro Photo, we will be very hands on. Um, I've got a bride coming and it's about saying, look, pick lights up and use them and realise it's really so much easier than you think. So the, that's a four hour session with a small group. Um, and I want people to use the lights and talk about their fears and everything. And then in the afternoon, um, Brent's doing a drone talk, but I'm doing an hour's talk specifically on how and when and why we use flash at weddings. Brilliant, brilliant. Right, we've only got a couple of questions left. <laughs> this is quite vague. What is enough images on a wedding day? Do you have a, I know you said, obviously, you, you get a gut feeling uh, when you haven't got enough. Do you work to a number, Kate? No, when I say and when I was talking about that, I was very specifically talking about um, couple stuff because uh, I know that that's why a lot of our couples book us. Be, you know, because of course we do documentary stuff during the day and storytelling, but they also want you know want some beautiful couple imagery. And and um, I I know I I deliver too much, right? But. Um, I mean, no, it is gut, really. I can't. It's really hard for me. But I would expect to be able to deliver, um, you know, five or six really beautiful spreads in an album of couple stuff. And that's quite a lot. Yeah. Brilliant. Um, well, yeah. Not always last, possible. The last question I've got is about you working with Brent. And obviously, we mentioned that, obviously, it's more on the film side with Brent. So... But if he picked, if you were booked both as photographers, would Brett, Brent go out as a photographer as well? Yeah, you know, absolutely. He second shoots photography and I second shoot film. Okay. And so the other question that actually came with regards to, to Brent and obviously the film work, do you ever pull stills from the video footage? That's really a very good question. Um, currently, he would not be filming 4K for a wedding because we're shooting for 10 hours. Yeah. Last night we, oh gosh, we were at um, Tower of London working for the Royal Palaces, um, filming an event purely on the drone, and it ended with Tower Bridge going up um, and a boat going through that all of the guests were on, and um, Brent filmed it in 4K, but we pulled a still and sent it, and that still's been everywhere today. So um, if it's 4K, absolutely. If it's shot in just 1080, then no. Yeah. Not yet. Brilliant. No, it's great. I'm just scanning that, make sure I haven't missed anything. Uh, I don't think so. No, there was a. Oh, okay, we're gonna. I'm gonna touch on the fundy stuff now in a minute. So there's, there's something there. That's fine. No, Kate. Look, before I take the screen back, um, thank you. I think it was a real insight, especially into the way that you work. But I think it's it was really important, and I think you showed tonight the importance of you know the story is you know you you nailed it. You know you you are recording that people's days. And I think there was a part in the presentation when you were talking about if you weren't actually at the wedding and you're somebody seeing that album, uh, I'm not saying it just because you're online with us, and but, you know, I, I went through that, you know, I've seen albums where you don't, you don't share that person's journey. And in both those albums today that you showed us at the end there, we went through that couple's journey and that was really evident. So I applaud you with your work, Lev and, and Brent. Yeah. You know, Good. You know, I think it's interesting, Joe. I don't think I probably don't share enough of the um, all the stuff I take of people and the laughter and the crying and the 
you know, because the stuff that I love as a photographer is the more arty shots and that, everything else. But, you know, I absolutely love the emotion of a wedding and that's why I do it. Um, but yeah, I think we should probably all share a bit more of that than the kind of just the couple stuff. I think it was there in the second one. I definitely saw that. That was a great shot. And I'm sure there's a great shot as the bride's coming up the aisle and he's definitely ready to cry, right? The groom, he, he was. Oh, yeah, 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 no, yeah, no, no, I, no. yeah you know. That, that was, well, I mean, most weddings and at Brent and I's wedding was the same. It was full of laughter and tears. You know, that's the reality. And that's what you'd hope from any wedding. And if there's a lack of emotion, it's, it's always a worry. <laughs> Agreed. No, brilliant. No, thank you. Really, you know, there's been lots of praise in, in the chat panel already, but thank you for, for a real uh, a great rep. Uh, great uh, presentation and the stuff guys that we haven't talked i'll just take the screen back kate so i've because i've got sure. the, uh, not, uh, let's make mine there we go um the the stuff that we haven't touched on if you want more uh, to see more about funding and what it can do for you guys we've had andrew funderberg online doing a you know an in uh, an in person uh, talk through about Fundy and all of its tools. So you can see that on the Photographer Academy. It's on our YouTube channels as well for free, as well as on the Fund. I'm sure there are links through the Fundy social media to see the recordings. Um, as I mentioned at the beginning of tonight, if you're not using Fundy already, you know, yes, you can save yourself $100 using our code, which is TPA2019. But if nothing else, go to fundy.com and download the free trial. It's a full working trial. It just won't let you export for print. Uh, but I get a feel for it, see how quick it is, see what the tools are available for you. And I promise you, if you give it a go, you won't look back. It will change the way you, you work your business. And that isn't just weddings. We've talked about weddings tonight. As Kate mentioned, I'm sure uh, the albums feature in your boudoir photography as well. I'm sure, Kate. Correct me if I'm yeah. wrong. Yeah. No, absolutely. And I yeah. think it's almost more important because I don't think people realise the, the range that they might get from a shoot. Well, with us now, with Mark Legon Photography, we're hardly doing any weddings, but album design is as big as part. Even with our portraiture, we do a lot of boudoir albums, but we do loads of album design with our portraiture, and it's you know it's as equally a powerful sell in selling tool as our wall art. Um, so you know it, it it's not just about wedding photography, and we haven't we haven't touched on it tonight because we've got previous ones on it. But there's the Fundy Magazine Maker and your and your card designers. It is a fantastic tool for your whole business. And as you mentioned, Kate, at the beginning, so much of it is your business now, marketing, you know, selling yourself, getting your clients, is that unfortunately in this day and age, the shooting is probably the shortest part of the whole process. Um, yeah. but, you know, having these tools at our fingertips definitely uh, changes things for us. So guys, nothing else, free trial if you haven't used it already. And of course, if you want to take advantage of the $100 off, that code is going to be valid for this year with us and Fundy. Um, so get in touch with that, get involved with them as well on their Facebook group. If you haven't done so already, I mentioned at the beginning, fantastic resource uh, for photographers and a great community there, facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash Fundy Storyteller. Um, and then my last shameless plug for the mic, going back to our uh, bigger photo academy e-zine. This is the very latest edition gone live today. It's all about extreme sports. It's an incredible read. Um, I read it on my lunch break today, and uh, the imagery are just phenomenal. Ten fantastic features, 78 pages with special offers and readers' galleries as well. Completely free to download. The links are in your chat panel, and you will get a reminder email from our all registered tomorrow for the links for ourselves and Fundy from that. That's it for tonight, guys. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, we'll be back next month with another Storyteller webinar. I believe it's being set up as we be, uh, speak, so we'll announce that really soon. Kate, again, from me to you, thank you so much for being online with us tonight. It's uh, been a great presentation. We'll have the recording on the Academy within a few days. I hope you've enjoyed it.